Good morning, everyone. It's a great pleasure to um, be moderating this first um, session, um, which is dedicated to uh, bias associated with conflict of interest and peer review, and was very uh, uh, pointedly introduced by the talk, uh, the plenary talk by Lisa Barrow. Um, the, um, so we're going to have um, four presentations, and uh, you will have the opportunity to ask questions after each of the presentation. The first presentation is by Quinn Grundy. Um, Quinn is a postdoctoral research fellow at the University of Sydney, and she will talk to us about the prevalence of conflict of interest disclosures in biomedical research. Thank you. Thank you. Author conflict of interest may be associated with bias in research and their interpretation. Conflict of interest disclosures are thus widely required in biomedical publishing per the recommendations of the International Committee of Medical Journal Editors. And thus they can act as a signal for risk of bias in research. Despite the increasing prevalence of this practice, we still lack understanding of the extent of conflicts of interest in biomedical research for a number of reasons. Firstly, disclosures are merely a proxy for actual conflict of interest. They rely on self-report and thus, as Lisa has highlighted, are likely underestimates of conflicts of interest. And we still see a great variation in reporting practices across journals. Despite the lack of data around prevalence, the discourse around conflicts of interest in research suggests they're widespread, normal, even unavoidable, if not desirable. The aim of this study was to estimate the prevalence of conflict of interest disclosures in biomedical research irrespective of discipline or clinical area or study design. And a secondary aim was to determine whether disclosed conflict of interest were associated with article characteristics, such as type or focus, including attention in the scientific literature and mainstream and social media. We randomly sampled articles that were published during 2016 in biomedical journals listed in PubMed and also reporting conformance to the International Committee of Medical Journal Editors' editorial policies. We included 1,002 uh, articles in the end based on an expected proportion of 20% of articles and a predefined target sample size. We included primary research articles, but also commentaries, editorials, narrative reviews, systematic reviews, and meta-analyses. We developed an a priori coding manual based on the National Academy of Medicine definition of conflict of interest and the ICMJE taxonomy for conflicts of interest. For all analyses, we grouped articles into three categories. Firstly, primary research, which included clinical trials, observational studies, case reports, commentaries, editorials, and narrative reviews, and lastly, systematic reviews and meta-analyses. We considered author conflict of interest and funding source disclosures separately, extracting these statements verbatim regardless as whether they were labeled as such. We defined a conflict of interest as that pertaining to the individual author, whereas a funding disclosure was support pertaining exclusively to the current work. We classified the focus of an article as related to drugs, devices or surgical procedures or neither, and the focus was determined uh, by whether the authors had mentioned a drug, device or procedure in the title or abstract. And finally, we examined two attention-related factors, including journal impact factor from the 2016 journal citation reports and the measure of social and mainstream media attention as the altmetric application programming interface. This graph shows the proportion of articles with disclosed conflicts of interest in orange, a missing conflict of interest statement in white, and a statement of no conflict of interest in green in aggregate and then by article type. The horizontal lines represent a 95% confidence interval on the prevalence. <clears throat> 
Overall, 23% of articles in our sample disclosed a conflict of interest. About two-thirds made a statement that the authors had no conflicts. And only 14% were missing a conflict of interest statement at all. However, when we broke it down by article type, you can see that the prevalence of disclosed conflict was significantly higher at about 31% among commentaries, editorials, narrative reviews, uh, in contrast to primary research sitting at about 19%. Similarly, we can see a pattern when we break the prevalence down by the focus of the article. So again, the disclosed conflicts of interest in orange, sitting around 19% for primary research. But as we look uh, at the, the different focuses, foci of the uh, articles, you can see that it increases for devices and surgical uh, focused articles, and then it is around 30% for primary research articles focused on drugs. We experienced a number of methodological challenges in doing this work. For example, we documented 130 different ways of stating the authors have no conflicts. We broadly grouped these into three themes that have variable meaning. So firstly, the sense that there is none declared. So for example, the authors did not declare any conflicts of interest contrasted with nothing to declare, so stating there are no conflicts of interest, versus no relevant conflicts, such as stating no conflict of interest exists in this paper. The longest statement we found was 63 words long. Nearly 40% of conflict of interest disclosures contained extraneous biographical information, long histories of employment, committee memberships, or misplaced funding information, such as current or previous public and not-for-profit research funding. The statements were also highly inconsistent and difficult to locate. We opted for duplicate data extraction despite extracting these statements verbatim, largely due to the difficulty in finding them. We found author conflict of interest and study funding disclosures were often conflated and that not all disclosures were located in the article PDF, but were often located online or in supplementary materials. We found two attention factors to be uh, interesting in terms of their relationship with disclosed conflicts of interest. So the graph on your left shows on the y-axis the proportion of articles published in journals with an impact factor of X or higher. And you can see that the orange line representing articles that disclosed a conflict of interest was consistently higher than those in green public that stated no conflicts. And similarly, we see a, the same pattern on the, the right with the altmetric score. So articles, again, in orange, disclosing a conflict of interest consistently had a higher proportion with a higher altmetric score than those without. And we found this pattern uh, across all subgroups for both attention factors, that the median journal impact factor or altmetric score was significantly higher for articles with disclosed conflicts of interest versus those that did not. Just under one in four biomedical research articles that are conforming to the ICMJE uh, editorial policies and indexed in PubMed are disclosing a conflict of interest. And interestingly, this estimate has been relatively consistent for more than a decade. And rather than reflecting the sense that conflicts of interest are the norm, represents a minority. However, we did find that disclosed conflicts of interest are concentrated among certain types of studies. For example, commentaries, editorials, which could reflect the fact that these authors may be both more influential and more likely to be targeted by companies for these kinds of relationships. But I think it also may reflect that consumers are disproportionately exposed to research by authors with conflicts of interest, which can contribute to the sense that conflicts are normalized and erode political will to develop strong management policies. I think this work also suggests the need to revisit reporting requirements, 
such as separating funding and conflict of interest disclosures so that we can understand their independent contribution to bias in research. Standardized reporting requirements across journals. And then perhaps uh, revisiting the idea of a registry where we have author rather than article specific disclosures, much like the open payments database for United States physicians. I would just like to thank my co-authors, Adam Dunn, Florence Bourgeois, and Lisa Barrow. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, Quinn. Uh, are there any questions for Quinn in the audience? There are a few standing microphones, so uh, if you have a question, please um, come to the microphone and announce yourself. I'm, I'm going to actually start with a question of my own um, while you are organizing your thoughts. Um, the, you focused your study on, the IC, on journals that were um, uh, complying with ICMG or were signatories of IC, members of ICMG. Um, it strikes me that the uh, absence of, disclosed, of any disclosure is actually quite low in your sample compared to, I think, other samples that we've seen in the literature that were not focused on ICM. Is that something you, you've noticed, or is this something you can elaborate on? Yes, yeah, so again, we focused on what, what could be considered a subset of journals with the, the best practices for mm -hmm. disclosure. Um, what we did note, however, was for conflict, conflict of interest is doing better than disclosure. So whereas only about 14% of articles were missing a conflict of interest disclosure, funding was not doing so well. So about 41% of our sample was missing uh, a disclosure about funding for the current work. Um, and so I think that's where we're again recommending a standardization of reporting requirements, separating author conflict from, of interest from study funding, because it's unclear in, that, in those cases mm -hmm. whether that missing meant there, there truly was no support or whether that was an omission. Right. Are there any yeah. questions? Yeah, we have a question at the microphone there. Um, hi, my name's Pippa Smart. Um, very interesting study. I've got two questions. The first one is, when you were ana analyzing the articles, were you looking specifically for articles that had um, a conflict of interest um, section? So would it be possible that you might have missed some statements of conflict of interest that in some journals are put in the acknowledgments? So uh, that is, is part of the methodological challenges that we uh, encountered. And, and my co-author, Adam Dunn, wanted to me to impress upon you how difficult these were to find. Because as you know, frequently they're not labeled as such. So that's why we did have two independent uh, reviewers extracting that data. So it's occasionally under acknowledgments, occasionally funding source and conflict of interest disclosures are within a generic disclosure section. Sometimes those disclosures were located online. So no, we, we didn't extract only those explicitly labeled as such. That was a double negative. Um, but we, we looked for that. And there was an element of interpretation then involved when that, that was reported together. Thank you. I have a second question. The correlation between the high impact factor journals and the disclosure seems perfectly understandable. But I wondered if you had any thoughts about the altmetric schools. It's interesting, and I, and I think um, we, we're going to do some more analysis because I, I think it's highly likely, first of all, that journal impact factor and altmetric score are also correlated. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't have that information as yet. So it could be that in biomedical publishing that those two now go hand in hand. Um, but I, I do think that, and Lisa has referenced this, this idea of a megaphone effect, that there's a bit of a chicken and egg here, whether influential authors and influential studies are targeted for financial relationships or whether they are receiving attention because they are influential and it, it's, it's unclear what the direction that mechanism, likely it's going both ways. Mm. Um, but I, I do think that this is the effect of, of sponsorship in an, another form simply than, than research funding. Mm. 
Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Vivian Bachelet from Medwave and USAC University in Chile. I enjoyed your presentation very much. So my question is, uh, according to the ICMJE recommendations, to my understanding, each author should disclose individually the conflicts of interest. However, we tend to see in published articles that it's sort of like a um, over-encompassing declaration on behalf of everybody else. And uh, we also see that corresponding authors will declare on behalf of the other authors, um, therefore setting up a mantle of sort of cover up on what's going on. Do you have any thoughts on that? Were you able to gain any insight on who is actually declaring what on behalf of whom? If I got that right in my English, I don't know. Yeah, the short answer is no, and I think that is one of the challenges that, that needs to be tackled. So really our unit of analysis is the study. And the way that disclosures are currently reported means that an article is conflicted rather than an individual author. Uh, my colleague Adam Dunn has recently published a commentary in Nature where he proposes a registry model so that there would be a central repository for authors to declare conflicts so those could be tied to individuals rather than having this composite disclosure for a published work. Yes, congrats also for your presentation. I'm sorry for my horrible English. Uh, I have to say first that in the 90s, I worked full time for the pharmaceutical industry. Then I fully agree with the interpretation of your data that you have done now here in the discussion, but not before. If you, if you show your graph, uh, you, can you go three slides back, yeah. please? This one or the Yes, previous? that one, perfect. Okay. So uh, my point is that the, the two groups are not randomized groups from ideas or from hypotheses or from papers, but are just two observational groups that might differ in uh, some things. For example, we can assume that people invest in money in research might invest money in the more promising and the more interesting research. If so, this will also happen. So it's, I'm just adding another interpretation. Yeah. I fully agree with your interpretations, but there yeah. are others. No, and I think this is this idea that it's probably a multi-direction relationship so that the more influential authors and studies are going to receive more attention, they may also be more likely to have a conflict of interest. Thank you. Yeah, perfect. Uh, Mark Dewey from Berlin. Um, you noted that about more than 10% had missing information, yeah. right? Was that in any way related to the impact factor? Because it may be due to underreporting in the low impact factor journals too, right? Yeah, and that's something I think we will continue to explore. So there were a number of other article characteristics that we've looked at, so including publisher, journal. Um, also, we included both animal and human research. And so I think in the next phase of this study, we will see if there are other patterns uh, within that and see if we could build a model. And certainly, again, acknowledging that this, you know, being indexed in PubMed and conforming to the ISA MGE policies, that we, we might be looking at a specific subset. Um, I, Theo and uh, Trish, I don't know, if, do we have uh, any online questions? No. Well, uh, please join me in thanking Quinn for her presentation. Thank you.